รายการต่อไปนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสนับสนุนโดยแลกเงินด้วยบัตรเครดิตเกษตรกรไทยเที่ยวก่อนจ่ายที่หลังไม่มีค่าธรรมเนียมพ่นชำระได้จากธนาคารเกษตรกรไทยสวัสดีค่ะเมื่อสัปดาห์ที่แล้วเราได้ฟังไฮไลท์เด็ดๆของบุคคลสำคัญระดับโลกที่มาร่วมงานวันยังเวิลด์ที่กรุงเทพมหานครเป็นเจ้าภาพไปแล้วนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นโคฟี่อนันต์หรือว่าบ๊อบเกลดอฟเป็นต้นวันนี้เราจะมาฟังผู้เข้าร่วมงานคนอื่นๆที่น่าสนใจไม่แพ้กันพูดหลากหลายประเด็นค่ะไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของการศึกษาธุรกิจเพื่อสังคมและความบกพร่องทางร่างกายค่ะหนึ่งในไฮไลท์ของการประชุมครั้งนี้คือการกลับมาขึ้นเวทีอีกครั้งของยอนมีปาร์กชาวเกาหลีเหนือที่เคยถ่ายทอดชะตากรรมของเธอที่ต้องหนีออกมาจากเกาหลีเหนือบนเวทีประชุมวันยังเวิร์ลปี2014ที่เมืองดับลินประเทศไอแลนด์เรื่องราวของเธอสร้างความสะเทือนใจเป็นอย่างมากคลิปของเธอมีคนดูมากกว่า2ล้านครั้งปัจจุบันยอนมีปาร์กอาศัยอยู่ที่เกาหลีใต้และได้รับเชิญไปพูดบนเวทีเพื่อสิทธิมนุษยชนระดับโลกหลายเวที I was born in North Korea often called the darkest place on earth where so much suffering and no freedom after Soviet Union collapsed North Korea regime stopped providing ration system so when I was born the country was starving and million people Died for the starvation. So for me, to seeing dead bodies, a very normal thing. I didn't think that was something odd about my country. I thought that's how world is supposed to be. And all I knew was I was living in the best country on earth, and our enemies were trying to attack us at any moment. At school, I learned math, and the math problem was like this. They had four American ambassadors, and you killed two of them. Then, how many American ambassadors left to kill? After my father became a prisoner, and I was hungry, and the hunger was unbearable, and it was clear to me that I had to do something about it. It was 2007. My sister, at the age of 16, she left to China. We didn't know I was coming again. We thought if we go to China, we might find food. A few days later, my mom and I followed her. It's kind of silly. I didn't escape for freedom. I didn't escape for this, to have a voice. I escaped for a bowl of rice. That's all I wanted. At the age of 13, when I was crossed the frozen river to China, As I said last year, the first thing I saw was my mother raped. And that was not only it. After even I escaped my tragic fate, I only became a merchandise. At the beginning place, my mother was sold for $65. And I was $260 as a child bride. And I was, was sold to human trafficker. Oh, I wonder, what can we do with the $65? I'm sure that we cannot buy your phone that you all have here now, taking photos of me. My mom's price was less value than iPhone. And in 21st century, that's what North Korean people are going through. Because they were born in North Korea. At the age of 13, I, when I had to be sold, they told me, if you don't want to be sold, you can go back to your home country. And I said, no, I'm hungry. Because being starved to death was worse than being a sexual slave. After two years of heroin year in China, my mother and I the opportunity to live like human beings, with dignity. When I came to South Korea, I was 15 years old. 
a grown, big, giant baby. I have no idea what was happening in front of my eyes. I didn't know even how to use the toilet. I didn't know what bank was. I didn't know what's ATM machine. I don't know what's a smartphone, what's the internet. But not only that, for the first time, people asked me what I think. They asked me, what's your favorite color? What do you want to be in the future? Nobody asked me when I was in North Korea. The regime decided everything for me. They told me what to wear, what kind of haircut I should have, what to study, where to live. Through my journey, I didn't only learn how to survive, but I learned what it means to be a human being. And there were times I lost my whole faith in humanity because people were the worst things. can do each other. They could do so much evil to each other. I couldn't trust people again, and especially men. But lastly, I have one young word. You restored my faith in humanity again. The people who I didn't even know existed before, that I don't know where you are coming from, but you cared because we share humanity all together. Oh, after one young word, because you went home and you didn't only care at that moment, you spread the words. You shared my video and the North Korea issue on social media. So here again we are at one young word. And as you never silenced for injustice happening to North Korean people, I know that you will not be silenced again this year for the injustice happening around the world. We had a terrible confirmation last week. It's not only their problem anymore. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And now, at this moment, this is our rights, our liberty. And I want to again to raise our voice that we have to fight for our liberty and rights. And I hope we can shape the world into a better place. Thank you, One Young World, again. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. ศาสตราจารย์มูฮัมหมัดยูนุสนักเศรษฐศาสตร์ชาวบังกลาเทศเจ้าของรางวัลโนเบลสาขาสันติภาพปี2006เป็นผู้ก่อตั้งธนาคารกรามีนซึ่งเป็นธนาคารปล่อยเงินกู้ขนาดเล็กให้คนยากจนได้นำไปเป็นทุนในการสร้างรายได้ต่อไปธนาคารกรามีนเป็นหนึ่งในต้นแบบของการทำธุรกิจเพื่อสังคมที่กำลังเป็นกระแสได้รับความสนใจอย่างมากในปัจจุบัน There's enormous possibilities. A business to solve human problems, and I was surprised why economics doesn't go in the direction. Economics goes only one direction of business: business to make money. And suddenly, it came to my mind: human beings are not money-making robots, but somehow economics taught us to become money-making robots. Either we become a money-making robot, or we work for a company to, who is a money-making robot. That's our life. There is no alternative. I said, why don't you put a business engine behind charity? It achieves the same objective, but people have to pay for it, and money comes back. Then you can recirculate the money. And I called it social business. Business to solve human problems in a sustainable way. Then people say, "Ah, oh, this will not work. Social business is not going to work. Why not? Because you have taken away the profit motive." I said, "Yes." Profit is a very important incentive, but it's not the only incentive in the world. 
I said, making money is a happiness, but making other people happy is a super happiness. And those who have tested it, they will say, ah, this is a much better exciting thing to do, to touch people's life. And that's what it kind of gets us excited about the social business. Are people, human beings, selfish only? No, I'm saying human beings are selfish and selfless at the same time. But the economists made business on the basis of selfishness only. I'm saying no, there could be business on the basis of selfless too. So you, it's up to you to decide, and you can run both. You can create a social business to change the world, address the problem that you see around you, or you can create conventional business, money-making business at the same time. So you can have two kinds of business on board. There's nothing, no problem. So let's talk about social business. How do we connect the two and, and, and ensure that we sort of op, um, achieve the objectives of our employers, i.e. Barclays, but at the same time we make a difference in the communities in which we do business. Um, and so far I, I actually have some ideas already and you discover what someone else is doing in their country and you think, oh actually we do have this problem as well at home and you can go back and replicate it. Um, but at, sort of over and above replicating it, it's more the motivation to actually do it. Um, so it's almost like an engine that drives us, the fuel that drives our engine to be able to make a change when we go back to our individual countries. And I think that's, that, that is what this thing is really fantastic for. Fatima Bhutto is a woman and a woman in Pakistan. She is a woman of the woman of Benazi Bhutto, a woman of the woman of the woman of Pakistan. She is a woman of the 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 woman. ฟาติมาพูดเกี่ยวกับปัญหาการศึกษาและปัญหาผู้ลี้ภัยที่ได้รับผลกระทบจากสงครามในซีเรีย I want to talk to you really briefly about Syria, which is the country where I was educated as a young girl. Now, before the war, before the fighting broke out in 2011, Syria spent 5% of her GDP on education. Compare that with the 2.4% that the much richer Qatar spends, or the three point something percent that the much, much, much richer Kuwait spent. Before the war broke out, Syria was at 99% um, enrollment in primary school. They were at 82% enrollment at secondary school. Um, they had almost hit universal education. And education in Syria was free for boys and girls in primary school, secondary school, and even university. Before the war, literacy in Syria was at about 86%, pretty equally between men and women. And for all intents and purposes, that's now over. That's finished. The UN estimates that the fighting over the past four years has set Syria's progresses in education back at least 10 years. 12 million Syrians have left their country, Half of those are children. There are four million Syrian refugees and two to three million children outside of school. Generally, access to education when you look at refugees, not just Syrians, but anyone, whether it's Palestinians or Afghans, is pretty dire. Primary school education uh, enrollment is at about 76%, which says nothing about how long those children last. It just says that they enroll. That plummets to 36% in secondary school. And if you're interested at university level, it's pretty much invisible. It's at 1%. What I like, the, the example I always like, and I think should be moved into education, is the example of Pope Francis who in the most compassionate response that I've read or heard recently, asked every church and every monastery and every diocese to open up their doors to refugees whenever they found them. And so should schools. So should schools 
and universities, please think outside of girls versus boys, um, primary versus secondary. Please think of the dispossessed and the displaced um, and the stateless, because if you don't, I don't know who does. Oscar Anderson, 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 Oscar เพื่อบอกเล่าถึงชีวิตและมุมมองของผู้บกพร่องทางร่างกายรวมถึงสิ่งที่เขาอยากให้คนทั่วไปเข้าใจและปฏิบัติต่อเขาก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได้ก็ได
มากเลยที่ได้รับนะครับก็คือเรื่องแรงบันดาลใจที่ได้รับมาเพราะเราจะพบเลยว่ามีอีกหลายๆคนที่บางทีเขาโอกาสเนี่ยน้อยกว่าเราเยอะมากแต่ว่าสิ่งที่เขาทำเนี่ยกลับมีผลกระทบที่ยิ่งใหญ่กว่ากันมากดังนั้นเราสามารถที่จะทําได้แน่นอนครับค่ะอย่างที่บอกนะคะอย่างชื่อวันยังโวก็เป็นสุดยอดผู้นํานะคะระดับเยาวชนก็พอเข้ามาแล้วรู้สึกว่าเราตัวเล็กเลยเพราะว่าทุกคนเก่งมากและมีความสามารถมากดีใจที่ได้มาร่วมงานนี้ค่ะส่วนผมก็ได้เป็นเป็นคอนเนคชั่นแล้วก็แรงบันดาลใจใหม่ๆที่จะนำไปแบ่งให้กับเพื่อนๆคนมีการว่าในโลกเรายังมีคนอีกหลายคนที่ลำบากมากกว่าเรานะมีมีปัญหามากกว่าเราก็จะได้ไปไปแชร์ให้กับเพื่อนๆคนมีการว่าโลกเรายังมีอีกอะไรให้หน้าคนไหนอีกเยอะเลยผลที่สำคัญที่สุดของการประชุมวันยังเวอร์คือการจุดประกายความคิดใหม่ๆและการสร้างแรงบันดาลใจให้กับผู้เข้าร่วมประชุมนะคะโดยหวังว่าไอเดียเหล่านี้จะนำไปสู่การต่อยอดแล้วก็กลายเป็นทางออกของประเด็นสังคมต่างๆในบ้านเกิดของผู้นำรุ่นใหม่ต่อไปค่ะพบกันใหม่สัปดาห์หน้าวันนี้สวัสดีค่ะ